ICIV podcast. Um, we're so glad you decided to tune in today. Um, if this is the first time that you're tuning in, we just want to welcome you. And if you don't already know, we have other episodes, so don't forget to check those out. Um, yeah, so we're actually just going to jump right in here. Um, as you can see, we're a bigger group today. Um, on this episode, we are going to be talking to our next gen youth leader. So I'll let them go around starting on this end. They'll introduce themselves. So yeah, take it away. Uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, some of you may have seen me up on stage uh, doing worship, um, but I'm also one of the next gen leaders. Yeah, I'm Alex. Hi, guys. Also do worship and yeah, I run the youth ministry here. I'm Jordan. I serve on the worship team cafe and also i am a next gen leader as well hey guys welcome back to the pod it's ryan um yeah i'm also on the on the next gen uter utership <laughs> youth leadership team <laughs> it's been a long day <laughs> okay this ep- guys just to keep in mind this episode might be a little uh shambles because we're all just yeah it's just us it's just us. Yeah, we're, we're very just, comfortable with each other we're, we're, we're just we're just chilling here <laughs> Um, so let's get right into it, guys. Yeah. Um, why don't you just guys like, let's give, and this is not a list of the questions, but I just came up with it, so don't uh, be surprised. Um, what kind of things or like what are some experiences that you had in your youth that kind of have inspired you to step into the role that you are in now? And why, yeah, why have you decided to take this leap and, and step into leadership? Um, I can start if you guys want to think about it while we're going. Um, I think growing up, and if you guys want to go back to, if you're listening, if you're watching, and you want to go back to our first episode of the podcast, you can learn a little bit about um, Alex and I's stories of how we grew up in the church and things like that. Uh, But I think I was surrounded by a lot of youth growing up in the church. But I don't think we ever had a designated space where we could just be. Mm -hmm. Um, and where we could just explore God on our own terms um, and learn about Him on our own terms. Um, I felt like it was always um, a one-way kind of ministry in in that we were kind of just being fed all of this stuff and not being able to reciprocate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Or like we were just being told things um, and expected to just hold those values and morals um, whereas now, like being an adult, um, I really wish I had a space where I could practice those things mm. um, and where I could just be a youth um, and not like have all of these rules or anything or, or like just a one way where a leader was like telling me all of these things um, to do. So I think like now being able to have this opportunity to work with Next Gen and, and work with the youth, um, my emphasis is really creating this space where youth can just be unapologetically them Mm -hmm. and ask the questions that they need to um and instead of like us as youth leaders just feeding them information that we expect them to follow um Mm -hmm. allowing them to learn from their mistakes and to yeah ask the proper questions and to be able to hopefully one day take our places as as the leaders within within the church because ultimately i think that's that's how it should be right Mm -hmm. like we have been called by our mentors to be leaders in next gen and hopefully us as leaders can mentor the next group of leaders coming up so that one day when we become <laughs> older than 30, <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> but when we become a little older, then like we won't be worried about the next generation because mm-hmm. like we've already established mm-hmm. um, all those things in them. So yeah, building that space um, that I didn't have um, now that we have the opportunity. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Um because, like, there's also, I guess, kind of like a generational difference, if that makes sense. But we still kind of get them to that extent, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, like, even when we do things like activities, it's kind of, like, f- refreshing, too, just to be, like, just laid back with them. Like, you know, you can just be silly. But also, I f- feel like, especially um, as we go into our small groups and all these things, we're also going to start talking about, like, things that really matter and how we can grow with one another. Um, And I think um, answering your question, um, how I, you know, kind of think about how I was as a youth, there wasn't really much, at least for um, me, um, 
and also if I'm being real here when I transition to CIV as well um, I think until now things are starting to ramp up differently um, and I appreciate that the space also that CIV is allowing for even us as like 20 something year olds you know um, to lead youth and also to give us us the space to like grow with them if that makes sense um, because I think even though like we are considered older and maybe cringy to them <laughs> um, we still get them to the extent like yeah. we, were, we were there like not too long ago let's be real here like six years ago seven years ago at least for me I'm speaking for myself but <laughs> um, yeah and also I think that also builds like generational like like bonds you know what I mean like I think I didn't get that a lot as a kid um, and we find that we are kind of still similar I mean even if I were to go and hang out with someone who's like 30 or something we, I'd still find similarities um, and yeah just creating a space also that we could like create those friendships and bonds um, and just grow together as a church I think that and just allowing them the space to be who they are you know what i mean and talk about the things that they want to talk about and um yeah i mean we're all going through our own faith struggles like let's be real here even at you can be nine and like you know going through that so yeah that's, that's what i have yeah i'll go um yeah i think it's what ryan said i think i just wanted to have a space in which the youth can um I don't know, just develop themselves and actually have fun at church. Uh, just because, I mean, I grew up in a conservative church and I didn't come to CIV until like halfway through my senior year. And so like from there, I went to Brazil, then I went to university. And so there wasn't re really much space for me to actually have like a, a, a space for me to actually develop and actually have fun at church mm -hmm. um, because I feel like fun at church isn't like a thing that people mm, even think yeah, of <laughs> um, but I feel like it, it's something that's very possible and I feel like that's also like one of the only ways to actually engage our youth is to have fun mm -hmm. because um, I know from when I was younger um, you know I would just stick in the back of church or maybe not even go into service and you know I would just maybe go to the Sabbath school and just sit there and stay with my friends or not even really pay attention to what's going on mm -hmm. um, just because the programs that they had was very you know cut and dry mm -hmm. and i totally get that and for some people it works for but i feel like for this next generation that's coming mm -hmm. this next gen of people <laughs> coming um are i think they want some more engagement and i feel like it's just i feel like i wanted to be a part of something that can actually help with that um mm -hmm. just because i look back and i feel like dang this i missed out on that so i wish these next kids could grow up and then when they're my age they look back and they'll be like church was sick like mm -hmm. this that was great and i yeah. feel like it, it creates a space again i feel like we're gonna say that a lot uh creates a space where they can grow up and transition into young adults and still have that fire and mm -hmm. where you know they can kind of transition into the young adult group and maybe even to the leadership group in the young adults or anything that they want to choose in the church and they'll just continue that that fire and then it can continue in their next generation and you know so on and so on so i'm hoping to kind of start like a, I don't know, something big here, so, mm. yeah. I think for me, I also came from the same sort of like background as all of us here where there wasn't really anything in our church just because it was like a conservative church, very like, very traditional. The only thing that we really had was probably Pathfinders, which mm. was like, mm. it was fun, but like that was all we really had. And there was nothing really... Um, not much thought put into the younger generation. It was mm. always just like, we're always with the older ones just sitting around waiting until something happens. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really fun that we're getting to be with these kids and you can actually see like the excitement on their faces now. Like mm -hmm. it's so like fun to see how they're like, Oh, I want to join. And they come up to us saying, um, we want to like serve here, start serving on the team, like different teams in the church. And it's nice to like allow them to, um, like have those opportunities mm -hmm. to share every weekend instead mm -hmm. of like just for specifically for them. Cause sometimes we would have kids church growing up, yeah. but now we have the accessibility to put them in different spots in our church, like cafe or like greeting or something mm -hmm. like that, where they're like out in the open and then our congregation sees that. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it's really special that we're creating this space for our young people to take care of our church when we're yeah. older. Yeah. yeah. 
No, that's so good. I mean, even just this probably will come out a little later, but we just had kids on Sabbath and I was telling them that um, I got emotional. Like I lit yeah. seeing like the, the youth up there and like leading, leading like the congregation into mm -hmm. praise and you could just feel it, the energy. It was just so, yeah, like creating, like I said, that space. And then once you let them go there, they, they moved me, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, wow. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's like the ultimate goal, right? Because like, and listen, I love our seniors in this church. I think I like I respect them so much too because they've done so much to build the foundations of of why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. But also, when we're thinking about the future of the church, like they are the future, um, yeah. and, and hopefully, what we do will instill service and leadership so that they can continue um, building the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully they can do the same for the next generation too, right? Yeah, and I think maybe we can maybe talk on that, like why we chose next gen, why why we're called next gen. Because I think like we had to really sit down and think like what do we want to be called? What is the tone we want to set for this ministry that we're trying to like pick up? Um, Which is youth ministry if you haven't yeah. picked up on that yet. <laughs> Hi, we're here to talk about <laughs> <laughs> for the youth, I'm just with that first. Yeah, um, so next gen is our youth ministry here mm -hmm. at CIV. Yeah, it's been a hole that I guess has has been a hole for mm -hmm. for some time now. Yeah, some, for quite some time. So we're filling that kind of age gap. Yeah, with what is now called next gen. Mm -hmm. What is next gen? Yeah, I mean, to give you a little bit of what um, behind the scenes, what. We had to sit down. We were at a cafe for like three hours. It was a long time. Mm. Yeah. And it, it, it was just, yeah, it was, it was a long day. But um, we also wanted to make sure that we weren't, I think, because at least for now, we want this to be a consistent thing. Like next gen, we want it to be a thing, hopefully, that, I mean, and like I said, there's there's going to be differences in the kids when they the younger ones come and take it, there might have differences that they want to incorporate into that, which is totally okay, because I think that's how we grow as a generation, right? Like, there's always going to be change. Um, but what it means to be a youth at church, um, and I think we, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I thought about who I was as a youth, right? When, um, what I went through, and how I have been um, brought up through the ministries that I do and how that has brought me to where I am now. Um, and I, I think this, it's, it was a very crucial time, like, you know, that age, like 18, something like that. Um, and they'd always say like, oh yeah, the next generation, the next generation, next generation. But you don't really start believing until you actually like are serving, if that makes sense. And then you start realizing like, dang, like, I guess we are really the ones to set the tone um, for now until there's another generation that's gonna come by and um, whatever that looks like. But those kids right now, they are going to be us sitting on this couch, hopefully. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like we're always going to be moving forward, but I think um, they, they are going to be us. And I think that's what, why we went with next gen, like our next, I'm not going to over, you know, complicated, but literally next generation. Let's, you know, but yeah. Cool. What are some things that you guys want to see happen for next gen? So what are some maybe short term or long term? I know, Daniel, you said you want a big thing to come out of this. <laughs> um, so what are what are some things that you guys are looking forward to to doing with next gen? Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, if you know our church, you know that we have an AOK program. It's a community outreach program. Um, and I feel like having our kids, our youth be involved in that, mm -hmm. um, go out and serve the community, mm -hmm. just, I feel like it helps not only them for like just real life world engagement, just because I live the sheltered life. Mm -hmm. um, I went from to Fraser Valley from kindergarten to grade 12. And I love that. That's great. If you're in doing that, Awesome. But the thing is, um, I feel like it just didn't give me a taste of the outside world. Mm -hmm. And um, 
in AOK community outreach, like night shift or anything, mm -hmm. you just get to see, you know, the realities of this world. And also not only that, you just get to c connect and just talk with strangers, mm -hmm. um, strangers that you would have never ever spoken with. And so I feel like that's a great opportunity to have these kids just develop and mature mm -hmm. in their, um, you know, not only their social aspect of not like between their friends, but you know, life, um, but also just get a, get a, a taste of what the world is like mm -hmm. and just like, you know, how can I do my best to actually help these people and just like go out and connect. And mm -hmm. so, um, we don't know what that looks like yet. At least I don't know what that looks like yet. Um, but I'm looking to implement some of that, some community outreach, anything that these kids can actually, you know, put their foot in the water and mm -hmm. kind of see what that looks like. Yeah. I guess, um, short term, long term goals. I was thinking while Danny was talking. Um, yeah, no, I think I just want them to, I guess for like when, when I was a youth, it was difficult for me to transition into like the young adult stage. Mm, yeah. And I think it's so cool that us as young adults get to like mentor them and be there for them and like be with them during their transition because it, it is difficult like mm -hmm. that age is like it's weird like yeah, it is. like a teenager to adult like what the heck um but yeah i think it's like making them comfortable making them know that like they are always going to have a safe space here and also once they get into that older stage and having a good group of like god loving friends good group of people who also want to serve just like they do mm. and i think i want to make sure that they're like have us there like they always know that they have us so mm. i think that's my goal is to make them feel comfortable and welcome everywhere they are yeah for me i guess this has been something that we've been talking about for a really long time and I think this is kind of a short-term and a long-term goal, because hopefully this is something that we can continue doing, is our next-gen Sabbath, mm -hmm. which is coming up here in November. Uh, but it's a youth-led Sabbath. Um, and what makes it different from Kids Zone Sabbath is our goal is to n have nobody up on this stage except youth. Mm -hmm. um, not not to put any, to devalue <laughs> anything that has happened recently uh, but we, w we would just love to see just youth leading up there mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like and how we can mentor um, and teach the youth um, will show up in maybe the next couple weeks but I'm hoping that after we do this one in November that this can be a more regular thing mm -hmm. um, that we just see the youth continuing maybe taking over um, the service a little more um, but yeah, like I think a lot of our strong suits on this couch and in this area are ministry. So I think a lot of us can just help mentor the kids in, in that mm -hmm. sense too. Yeah, I think it's not only just like having them on stage. Like I, I envision them, you know, doing um, what's it called? Greeting. Oh, greeting like the yeah, first impressions. just first impressions, yeah. cafe, yeah. L like literally everything in which you know it doesn't need to be an adult. Um, I feel like it'll just give them such. A sense of empowerment mm -hmm. just to be like dang this is when like looking around that everyone's my age taking charge of church and this is a big church and so i feel like just imagining being in charge of that i feel like that would help them kind of yeah just like i said already be empowered and just like be excited to actually like ryan said do it again you yeah. know because i feel like this is a it could easily be a reoccurring thing you know, who knows yeah um for me maybe i'm thinking long long term but mm. i'm um my goal is that i mean my job be taken i guess by some youth here to be honest um in the best way possible I, um just because i'm just thinking about we've all been serving together for a while now like and it's crazy to think that um we don't, i'm getting a little personal here but when I was presented with the idea to um, be a, the youth le um, leader here at CIV, I was a little bit shocked. Um, I knew I want I want to do to do something in ministry, um, and I always knew it had something to do with um, 
relational and um, just also just getting to know people in um, community. And when they said youth leader, I was a little scared because if I'm being like, I have a brother and he's 15 years old and don't get me wrong, I love him to pieces. But sometimes it's a, I get awkward and I'm just like, oh, hey. And then he's like, you're cringy. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. And not that like it's, I'm afraid. It's like kind of intimidating too, like to be honest, but I'm not scared. It's okay. You can throw it at me. It's fine. But um, for me, I was like a little bit scared. And it's always scary, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a ministry and especially with thinking about like the crucial years, you know, you're like, goodness these are teenagers like they are just stepping into the world like just discovering the world if that makes sense and um yeah I was a little scared but name was like I got your back you know we are here to support you and um he's like you have to pick your team and I sat with myself and I was like you know thinking and I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking and I I'll, yeah I prayed before even like you know a lot I had to do a lot of praying and I'm I'm not one like I'm really my prayer life isn't like the best in the whole wide world like whose prayer life is really the best but I had to make sure that I was going to dedicate this to God I wasn't it wasn't just gonna be like oh these are my friends like we're gonna hang out like it was who are the people that I feel like um could we could all grow together but also these kids like you know Ryan's their teacher. Like Jordan is with Cafe. She has a sister and Danny helps out at the school. And, you know, that these kids are also, they're not strangers to them. You know, you know what I mean? Um, and that they know who they are. They And at least some of us, like we we feel like we can be vulnerable enough and real enough. Um, and yeah, so hold up. I lost my train of thought back. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, it was like I had to really think about who, who, are, who are the people I'm going to call right now. And honestly, I just want to say right here right now, sorry. I appreciate you guys, and I love you guys so much. And so thank you for being here. But um, ultimately, like, just to see us, like, we just came back from, like, we just served, you know what I mean, this Saturday, too. And just to see how we all, and we just celebrated Jordan's birthday and how we all as Friends are loving our youth, but also like taking in, you know, God's beauty and celebrating each other and having creating the, those spaces that we all are binded by God, God's love and our love to serve others. Um, and I think for me, that would be my goal is that these kids, they see that they're young adults, they're next gen leaders. Yeah, we're not only their leaders, we're not only a team, but we are um Friends who love to serve together, if that makes sense. And my long-term goal would hopefully someone would see that and be like, wow, I would love to do that. And like, we're all different. Like, you know, we're all going to have our differences. But I think together um, we are slowly cultivating this atmosphere of, you know, vulnerability. That's what I also want is too, is for the kids to know that this is going to be a, like we can talk about those things that like, you know, that we don't usually get to talk about and that we have gone through those struggles too. So I think ultimately for me, it would be like, a, you know, a next gen kid was like, yeah, I would love to teach our, my, the youth at their time. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like love to see and, you know, what we're doing here, what the, what the four of us are doing here and what you are doing, Alex, is so important. Um, for building the groundwork for this youth program and also just establishing the youth program. Mm. But I would love, love, love to see CIV get a youth pastor mm. um, who is just dedicated mm -hmm. to the work um, of working with the youth and, and the youth program. So hopefully the work that we're starting mm -hmm. and the program that we're starting will just establish a youth program so that when, if, when, when <laughs> CIV gets a youth pastor, um, like it'll already be ready um, mm -hmm. and the youth will just be like hit the ground running yeah. um, so I think that's the for me that's the end goal you know mm -hmm. I would love to see um, a pastor in, in here mm -hmm. like a youth pastor 
Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, we just got Pastor Allison Mm -hmm. um, with Kids Zone Church. Um, With Kids Zone, period. (laughs) But the youth are, like, they need need that too. Mm -hmm. Um, So, hopefully... We can get that. I don't know what needs to be done. <laughs> pastor Nim, Pastor Abraham, <laughs> call somebody. That's funny. We need a pastor up in here. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next question, guys. Um, what do you guys think would be the best outcome of the things we're doing? Um, does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. what, what do you guys want? I guess we've kind of been talking about that mm-hmm. already. Um, but what do you envision for this for this youth program? Like, yeah. what what do you think, or what does it look like? You know, I think. I mean, when you say that, when you ask that question, I don't really think of the youth. I think of what they'll be like. Like, I don't. I don't think of them now because I know that you know it's it's you can't see results now. I feel like in anything, anything that you're trying to work for, you only see the results later. Um, and all, a lot of these kids, they're already growing. Um, and they grow up so fast. It's crazy. Uh, so <laughs> I think like so it was, yeah, just before, just before Alex said that, um, she'd love to see them on this couch. I was thinking on how it'd be cool to see them all just sitting on this couch or just one or two and taking over your guys' spots mm-hmm. and having them be excited about this as well. I think it's just, we, yeah, like you said, we already, we already kind of touched on it already, but I think it's just to have them go forward on the next, you know, age group. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess from there it's young adults Um, and just have them be fully involved in, in, in Valley Co or praise Mm -hmm. or cafe or um, first impressions or anything. Um, I just think any involvement in the church is such a good way to stay spiritually like on fire mm-hmm. with God, because really you have no choice for me. I find it hard to come to church every week and actually be involved in the church and not actually like, like be happy and like excited about what's going on mm-hmm. because there's no way. I mean, I, I would be miserable if I would, if I was doing this and I didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think I'm, I'm just a testament to, to what they could be and mm-hmm. just, you know, on fire. But, to skip the whole lukewarm kind of Christian kind of deal where you're just not in church. You skip church. You you don't even want to think about it. Um, I just want them to kind of flow into that rather than kind of just like, I don't know how to, how to describe it. This is like how my, my mental works to step onto it rather, rather than like jump onto another kind of phase in their life. I want them to just be a seamless transition into being just on fire for God. Mm. Yeah, I think I want to make like have such an impact on them that they want to share with others mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. of the church. Yeah, I think it would be so amazing. Like, I think we already we have had. Yeah, we. One of my cousins, she brought her friend from high school that doesn't even go to an SCA church, doesn't even go to church at all, and he comes, and he's always interacting with us, asking us when's the next event. Like, mm-hmm. can I come? And I think it's already so neat that with our first event, we already had that. Yeah. yeah. And to think of like all the other kids that can like tell their friends at school, hey, come, we have this like these fun events. Mm-hmm. And for it to like spread and for us to have big, like we could plan like big, like youth, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like there's yeah. just like a lot of fun things that we could do and that yeah. it can spread not just in our community, but to other communities yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I want to switch it up actually a little bit. Again, <laughs> we've been talking a lot about what um, what we've been doing for the kids, and um, which is so important because you know we're doing it ultimately for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I guess like, what ultimately do you hope to gain yours from yourself from this experience? Um, and and what kind of things have you experienced already that um, have made taking this leap into leadership worth it? Um, I will say for myself, like. I do. I work at the school. I, I said so, I've said that in so many episodes, <laughs> uh, but I work at our school here, um, attached to Church in the Valley, and it's a different dynamic being able to see my kids at school, and see them at church, mm. and serve alongside them, mm. and teach them Sabbath school. Um, and I feel like that's a, a such that's such a unique experience um, to be able to just work so closely with my students, um, but. For me, it kind of pushes me to 
um what am i trying to say to be that mentor to be that to be that person for them um as a teacher like i see these kids more than they see their parents um so even more so making sure that i'm like walking in the right path with god um and making sure that i am um the person that hopefully i can mentor these kids to be too um and i've never experienced that before um so hopefully like i i just feel like i'm i'm learning more from the kids than hopefully they're learning from me mm. um and i hope they know that um yeah, i'm learning more from you guys <laughs> uh so I'm just so grateful that we have this opportunity to just be able to work so closely with them mm -hmm. um, and with like spiritually and mentally um, like on this level um, and on multiple levels because uh, you don't get that anywhere. Um, and just to be able to say that like my teachers at church and my teachers at school, like mm -hmm. when do you see that? Mm -hmm. Like you almost never see that. So I think that was like a God given gift um, and I'm yeah. I'm just grateful to be able to connect with with them. Like I don't have a lot of family out here. I don't have family. Period. Actually, out here. So to be able to like just be integrated in that way, and and now like build a family um, throughout working at the school and at the church, like that's big for mm -hmm. me. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm just grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I think it's opened my eyes um, to these kids. I mean, I mean. It was not long ago, like Alex said, I was one of them. But I feel like there was no connection. There was no bridge to any young mm -hmm. adults. Um, and what I realized is, one, these kids are really funny. Like, yeah. like, I know. Like, like they're really up. funny. And it's just, if they can touch into my humor, like, <laughs> like there, there's a closer connection than I thought. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, they're, some of them are 10 years younger than me or some, <laughs> yeah, there's six to, or like, yeah, seven to 10 years younger than me. Um, but even still, they... I'm able to actually connect just because I'm actually, well, one, I'm, I'm one of their leaders. And so I have to make the effort to connect with them. But when I do, it's just, you know, I didn't give them, I don't think I gave them the credit that they, that they des deserve, mm. you know, like they're, they're young kids. When you see young kids, you immediately think bah, you don't know anything, you know, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. like, cause I feel like, I feel like all of us grew up like that. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. And granted, sometimes they don't know what they're talking about <laughs> but a lot of the times a lot of the times i feel like they have opinions and 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 thoughts that you know are super valid mm -hmm. and like if i don't see something maybe from them their perspective they see something and it's as just as valid as, as my opinion mm -hmm. um and i just think that it's it's helped me learn and adapt to give these kids the credit that they deserve mm -hmm. um just because i don't know i for if I grow up thinking that anybody younger than me doesn't know anything, um, I don't know. I feel like that's going to set up a lot of roadblocks in my life. And because um, I know for a fact in my life, there's going to be people who are younger me, younger than me in this society who are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I think that way, I feel like it's just going to be, you know, hitting roadblock after roadblock. And I think it's just a way for me to respect these kids and I hopefully, you know, get the respect back. Um, but I feel like if I don't do that, I won't get the respect back. Mm -hmm. um, just because, I mean, I'm not a teacher at a school. So, like, it's not like a level of authority where, like, it's kind of like, all right, everybody put your phones away, be quiet, blah, blah, blah. You kind of have to come at it with a mutual kind of friend-like mm -hmm. um, view. Um, unless you're a coach in basketball, which then you can do that. Um, but uh, as, a, as a youth leader, you really kind of bring yourself, I'm not going to say down to the level. Mm -hmm. You you meet them where they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm and you just see eye to eye rather mm -hmm. than kind of looking down on them. And I think yeah. that's really special just because they have so much to say, they do. a lot they to so say. Um, and it's just, you just have to learn to respect it and mm -hmm. to listen and to, you know, give them the space to talk yeah. at the appropriate time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You think about us too, even like we're probably the older ones think that like, oh, look at those young adults. Some, right? Yeah. And obviously, if you think about it, we're in that same area too. They're giving us the space here as young adults to lead the younger, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, like I think what you're saying, like we can't always think that we're just like here and they're here. Um, we have to meet each other, you know? So yeah, I, mm -hmm. I like that. I feel like we should be the generation that stops that because yeah. us, we're, we're Gen Z, we're the older side of Gen Z. Yeah. Um, these kids are still Gen Z, I think. Yeah, Most some of them. Of, some of them. Gen some Z, Gen, Gen Alpha. Alpha. Um, but I feel like it's just we have we've had no space in the church to actually step up. I feel like five years ago, even 
no one in their 20s would be hosting a podcast for the church. Yeah. I feel like five years ago, no one would be hosting a podcast anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like like we wouldn't have, people our age wouldn't have the opportunity to host a podcast at a mm-hmm. church. And I'm glad that Pastor Nim, Pastor Abraham kind of trusts in us mm-hmm. to actually even, or trust in you guys really, because you guys are the podcast, but um, trust in us as leaders as well to just kind of take charge and give us the empowerment that I was speaking of earlier to those kids. I feel like we're just, older kids at the end of the day we're all kids we're just older kids and so like the older kids pastor Nim and pastor abraham they are seeing what we're seeing as well and so yeah i just really appreciate that yeah. and i guess going into the last question we have here um unless jordan did you have it oh what did you do you want to ask me first oh well i think that kind of ties into like how it like pushes us out of our comfort zones because like mm-hmm. me like personally for me older kids teenagers they kind of scared me because they're like <laughs> they're taller than me yeah. <laughs> like Five, sometimes teenagers are scary i'm Their very short yeah. <laughs> i'm a lot used to working with like elementary school kids like yeah. little kids but i think it um i remember when alex asked me to help or like to, what i should um or if i should help on this ministry i laid on my bed and i was like oh should i do this like i've never worked with older kids before mm-hmm. but i think it was like really pu- um, allowing myself to put my faith in God and having this opportunity to also share and minister to the older kids. Mm-hmm. Cause I already know, I already have like experience with the younger ones. So mm-hmm. I think like, it's also, um, learning how to minister to older ones as well. Every mm-hmm. age. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We learned something earlier today. Um, and it's that Jesus, like, you know, that song, Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus don't, he doesn't take the wheel yeah. like we ultimately we're driving the wheel yeah. but we trust God to, to navigate, navigate us into the right yeah. direction so yeah 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 so we like to end here with a question um, which is I guess I'll ask this to you guys first and uh, we can share a little bit do we have to answer we don't have to answer right? Yeah, we I'm, I'm, we can answer like okay. Was it? Yeah, sure. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what advice or what what would you say to your younger self or some if you were a youth looking back at yourself right now? <laughs> you look at little Danny and you look at little Jordan. Oh, sorry, Dan, Daniel um, <laughs> and little Jordan. Um, what would you say? You just say, tell us. What would you? It's just this in regards to like church or it could be yeah, in regards advice, to anything, anything that you conversation that we just had. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, honestly, I wish I could just say, just like, just like stay, you know, just, mm. I've, I, I, like, I didn't leave the church, you mm-hmm. could say, but you know, I just didn't care for it. I, I would go, which is valid. I'd hang out with my friends in the foyer or not even sometimes and just like leave, mm-hmm. go leave. And it was just a, it was just an extra day that I could see my friends. Um, and I just wish I could just be more involved. Mm. Um, just 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 stay um do something mm-hmm. you know you're gonna regret it if you don't because I, mm-hmm. I i like to live my life not having regrets but um it's hard to say that i don't regret not being more involved in the church at a younger age mm-hmm. just because you know i had to learn everything to you know coming into the church at an older age and i you know i'm i'm okay where i'm, I'm at with that but i feel like i would have been so much more knowledgeable and everything if i were to go um, and do everything what I'm doing now, just at a younger age, just mm-hmm. honestly, not even like my preteens. Um, but like, even like my late, like when I was a young, like when I was starting to be a young adult, 17, 18, um, I just wish I could tell you to just like, or me really tell me myself, <laughs> just stay where you're at, stay where you're at. Um, and just try, just put mm-hmm. some effort, put some effort. Hmm. It's crazy how little effort goes a long way in this church. So yeah, I'd say that. I think sort of along the same lines that as that too, where I think it would be important for me to back then to find someone I was comfortable with in the church to be able to like pour my heart out. And Mm. I think that's important for like anyone here now is to find someone where you can just like say anything, just be comfortable, be vulnerable with them. And I think I wish I had had that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to like find someone as your mentor and i think in that way it would also open up doors for you to feel more comfortable and asking oh can i serve here and like finding more opportunity because sometimes you just stay in like one ministry and you think this is all i can do 
Um, but there is really a lot more that you can serve God with. And yeah, I think that's what I would tell myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think quick, I will just quickly say, um, is don't like, at least if I look back at little Alex, we like, don't belittle yourself just because of your age. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's why also why we're sitting here on this couch too, is we are trying to empower our youth. That's why we are the next gen leaders. Um, and I feel like, I, as a teenager, I was definitely like, I can't, like, how am I going to, if you've watched my faith journey, I'll talk a little bit about how um, I went through religious trauma and how that affected me as a teenager. And I just was like, you know what, like, these adults don't want to see me for who I am. Um, and that destroys, that destroyed me. And it made me feel little, like me being a teenager, um, I was nobody and like the span of like this a church you know what I mean it didn't I didn't feel empowered in any way so I feel like I would tell myself like don't belittle yourself like regardless of what regardless of even if the people in the church don't see you for who you are like God still loves you and cares for you and you have you have a voice and also you have this love like I I to share with other people you know what I mean I can't just keep it for myself if that makes sense so yeah Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. I'll share. <laughs> yeah. I think I would say like along the lines of um, find a community, stick to your community, and appreciate your community. Because um, I think that's one of the things that we're also trying to cultivate here with the youth, right? Is a sense of community, mm-hmm. um, a sense of like togetherness. Um, just because like why, young adults has theirs, kids have theirs, adults have theirs. Whereas, like, I feel like before youth, maybe you go downstairs into the atrium and the youth are just, like, Mm -hmm. hanging out on Mm -hmm. their own. Um, So, community. Just, like, find a community. Stick to that community. um, And, like, appreciate that community that you're in. Like, Mm. don't try to beef with anyone. Because at the end of the day, like, that's your family. That's family. (laughs) That's family. Um, So, yeah. Community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well... Thanks, guys, for um, sitting here and talking. I think also this is really nice to to just sit and hear your guys' ideas and the love you guys have for our youth and how we are going to move forward with this ministry. And, um, yeah, so thank you. just want to say love. (laughs) Yeah, I think I just wanted to add one more thing. I think it was really cool for what Jordan said. was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, because it's Sunday. Yeah. So last yesterday, um, I walk in, walk in the foyer after church. I dapped up a few of our kids. And I just feel like never, never, when I was younger, there, when I was their age, mm-hmm. anybody my age would go, yo, what's up, Danny? How's it going? Mm-hmm. You know? I, there was such a huge disconnect. There and was, I yeah. think that, you know, we could be those bridges just to connect mm-hmm. the young adults to the to the mm-hmm. youth. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's so important. Yeah. So I just wanted to I just wanted to add that one more thought just because <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's I think it's just super important just to have them that disconnect because it's it's important for us to have our groups, you know, Valley Co, young adults, next gen journeys, all that stuff. But I feel like it's important to know at the end of the day, we're all one big family. Mm, yeah, and so good. it's just like you know, we have our classes, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, when we're in the foyer, we're all the same. Yeah. And I think it's just, I, we never, I never had that. Yeah. I don't think any of you, if you did, yeah. great, but I didn't. And so I just think it's good to have that connection for what Jordan was saying, to have that mentor. And we don't have to have a, you know, a classified, you know, like serious mentor, yeah. but you know, maybe just a casual, just like, Hey, what's up? How's it going? What's your, how's your day been? You know, yeah. just cause I feel like, I don't know. I don't know what it feels like because I never had it, but I feel like it's important. I feel like it's nice to have someone that age, my age, our age, mm-hmm. to just show that they care. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's good. Well, thanks, guys. Well, um, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. So when we close off, we like to just end with our, you know, this last part. Church of the Valley yeah. say. Our Church of the Valley like, yes. last time we didn't. <laughs> but um, we just want to also just thank um, quickly our church family too for allowing us um, this opportunity, I mean, we are, they, they always say, you guys are young. And we, we, I'm like, I don't feel young though. <laughs> but we, we're young and we're learning and we're growing. And so I just want to say thank you guys for also allowing us the opportunity in this space. And um, yeah, just to also, I guess, lead your kids, if we're being honest here, allowing us to also grow with them. So um, I'm really 
thankful for this opportunity and I thank this team that I have here with me. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to see what it's like um, to be what next gen is going to look here at CIV for 2025 and onward. And um, 2024 yeah. too. It's not over. You're right. 2025. <laughs> yeah. And just like, just be like Danny said, like on fire for Christ. Cause uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going on again, but just like as a kid, like you, you're just standing there when things happen, you're just like, oh, okay, whatever. And just to see your kids break out of their shells, how they just did last Saturday for kids own Sabbath. So, I just want to thank you guys again um, for also you're allowing us to let your kids come upstairs and be silly with us. Um, but yes, um, if you guys don't already know, um, don't forget to like, like subscribe. and subscribe what <laughs> Ryan said. And um, yeah, just stay updated. We're, we're so ex excited for um, the other episodes we're going to have coming. So yeah, we'll see you guys next time. And uh, don't forget to love god love people and serve the world hey